I think that, you know, I've often been asked this question, especially since I started being more out about having multiple partners, because of course, I mean, once everyone gets past the scandal and wants to ask about the sex and the jealousy and stuff like that, you know, people start asking the questions of like, well, well what about getting married? Yes. What about like the most? Oh, gosh. Right. Get that question. If you're happy with the same old ways of dating. If you enjoy sucking at communication. And you have no desire to improve your romantic life, then our podcast might not be for you. But if you want some out of the box ideas to deepen your current relationships. Broaden your sexual horizons. Develop a better understanding of yourself. Or learn more about non-monogamy, then you've come to the right place. I'm Jace. I'm Emily. And I'm Dedeker. And this is the Multi-Amory Podcast. On this episode of the Multi-Amory Podcast, we're talking about relationship goals. Hashtag relationship goals it's had its heyday a few years ago, but the concept is still a huge part of our culture. Every day we're presented with information about what we should be working toward in our relationships, but are those goals all they're cracked up to be? Today we're going to be exploring some of those goals, as well as looking at ways to help you choose goals that won't come back to bite you. Uh, you don't want your ass. goals to get all bitey. Like a piranha, a piranha exactly. goal. Yeah. yeah. I can say... With 99% certainty, I don't think I've ever actually used the hashtag relationship goals in any social media post. Oh, I definitely put it on some of our social media posts for multi-amory. So, well, that's, so by, by, by proxy, yeah. you have. Sorry to let you know. Well, okay. Okay. Well, I'll give an exception for the multi-amory official Instagram account. But Jace, have you ever actually used hashtag relationship goals? Uh, I don't think so. Possibly, ironically, at some point. Oh, probably. But, probably. Yeah. You know, that's... Yeah, I think I maybe only an irony I've used it. Or just been like, ah, this is funny. Relationship <laughs> goals. But I guess people do actually say that. I mean, I remember when like Barack Obama and Michelle Obama, like everyone was like hashtag relationship yeah, goals. That well, see, was I thought it was the one. Barack Obama and Joe Biden that everyone well, that was one like, well, that one hashtag too. relationship yeah. goals. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Pretty much a lot of celebrity couples, everyone's like hashtag relationship goals, any kind of power couple, hashtag relationship goals, any kind of like fictional characters they've shipped together hashtag relationship goals <laughs> right you know stuff like that but let's get down to business today and talk about what is the general population referring to when they write hashtag relationship goals uh well i can tell you what urban dictionary thinks please do which i guess it is essentially what the general population thinks well that's i mean that's kind of a scary claim to make yeah. maybe <laughs> but but actually i i figured that these two that we decided to say to the audience uh, that is pretty much probably what i think of at least when people say hashtag relationship goals yeah, so the first they? one is going to be a couple who are the best couple out there. <laughs> they are the power couple. Everyone wants to be like them. Mm, nice. And number two is the most fucked up way of saying I want a relationship like theirs. <laughs> kind of hit the nail yeah. on the head there, uh, I suppose. Yeah. I like that we went from last week using Urban Dictionary and being like, wow, this is actually like a pretty <laughs> good definition. And then this week it's the usual Urban Dictionary. Well, it's not a necessarily Fair. a poor def definition of what it is it's a it's functional fairly definition. accurate yes <laughs> all right. All right. yeah sure because it's true because that's what it gets it gets applied to you know social media posts of power couples whatever the heck a power couple is i think to be a power couple you have to be rich and or famous and oh, then yeah. by default you're a power couple right sure uh, i guess yeah i, I can't I mean, maybe it's hard for me to think when I hear the phrase power couple, it's hard for me to think of normal people, even though I think legitimately normal people are power couples if they're, you know, rocking it and kicking ass and taking names. But I mean, just kind of in the most superficial sense, it seems like you have to have some kind of celebrity or wealth status. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. Oh, uh, yeah. So kind of as a funny side note, uh, the term relationship goals, as Jay said, it did kind of have its heyday. It has been on a downward trend as far as popular usage goes. According to Google, which does track these things, usage of the term spiked in June 2015. What happened in June 2015? Uh, I mean, that was probably the heyday of the the Obama Biden relationship. Uh, goals. Yeah. yeah, there was like I thought a vogue spread of Michelle and Barack Obama 
Mm. I thought of them just like looking gorgeous and powerful and stunning and regal. And I feel like maybe (laughs) that's when that happened. I don't know. Hmm. Don't quote me on that, everyone. But I feel like perhaps that was a time. And then Trump came into office and that all changed. Everyone lost their sense of hope for their relationship. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Ugh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. That is funny. In June 2015, I was going through a really toxic breakup. Mm, mm. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So uh, time. Anyway, since then, it's been steadily decreasing in usage ever since. Um, I, upon searching it, I couldn't quite find, like, is there a particular term that is rising to glory that is going to be the replacement for hashtag relationship goals or like I just wonder what's the next thing that the kids are going to latch on to as far as how mm-hmm. they point out the people and relationships that they find the most inspiring hmm. yeah I, I guess know. we're not there yet I, I would probably be the last person to know that answer because you're the oldest man the old, the, it's true yeah ever to live first man yeah <laughs> um so. that ryan gosling movie was actually about you yeah <laughs> yeah um but i do want to clarify this episode is not actually about hashtag relationship goals this is not an episode where we're going to do a deep dive into the history of that trending hashtag from 2015 <laughs> wow. spoke a little too soon that would be weird. yeah um but uh what this is actually about is kind of the concept of relationship goals And this can look like a few different things, right? So the example we've been giving so far and what that hashtag was usually used for was not usually talking about a specific relationship goal, but more like my goal is to be like them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever, whatever it is about them that I've identified is, is not always clear. Yeah. I feel like often it was just like, they are cute and they're in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Hashtag relationship goals. It's just like they have a relationship. And therefore relationship. Yes. Yeah. 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 And it's not uh, immediately apparent whether or not it's falling apart. So uh, hashtag right. relationship goals. Right. True style. Or it seems sweet or I think they're attractive or mm. I think they're rich or, you know, whatever it mm-hmm. is. Relationship so goals. Relationship yeah. goals. Yes. Yeah. Um, but on the other hand, there's also a lot of goals that we either grow up having about relationships um, which are, you know, sort of the typical like fairy tale story, like since you're a little kid, imagining this certain future for yourself, those sorts of goals, mm. or they're goals that are more directly imposed upon you by like your parents asking, you know, when are you going to get married? When are you going to have kids? Whatever it may be in your case. And so we're kind of talking about all of that in general, like this idea of having your goals for your relationships come from, I want to be like this thing about these people, or I want to hit a specific milestone, or I want to do a certain thing and kind of really examining that and not just taking for granted, like, oh yeah, those are just goals, of course. Yeah. I think often when we start out as young people, just because society tells us to, like, we have all these boxes that we need to check as we move forward in our life. So, you know, sometimes that first box is just going to be like finding a partner, finding a steady partner or a partner with whom you are going steady, Um, you know, and then from there, there is like the normal, I guess, trajectory of like where your life is headed. Mm -hmm. And people, I think, so often don't really stop to think about, is that something that I want for my life? And we've talked about this before in the fashion of relationship escalators Mm -hmm. so you know your relationship escalator again will move you in one direction and that's it and that's you know you're always striving to like check the next box or get the next goal um and that's it and i guess we'll we'll move on from there and kind of talk about what some of those things are yeah i mean just to take a quick second about the relationship escalator for someone who might just be joining us today like if we could kind of summarize the concept, right? And it's that idea that relationships, like Emily said, only move in one direction and that we think about them. Or else they're a failure. Or else they're a failure. Like you don't go backward on it. You just sort of break up. Mm. Or, um, and then also the idea that they're always moving like upward and forward, that there's this sense of like, where's the relationship going? Where is it heading? Like, is it progressing? As if there's like a clear linear, like progress toward question mark and that's sort of the the relationship escalator yeah. right is that idea of just like you just got to keep going up that one direction or you get off yeah and at the top of that escalator is uh, it's 
Di- yeah, it's dying together. It's dying, yeah. <laughs> really? Essentially. Hashtag relationship goals. <laughs> oh, jeez. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, wow. Gosh. Okay. Sorry. Well, no, but really, just... like, isn't that isn't that what so many people out there think? Like, it's so romantic that like I'm going to live with my partner until the day I die, or yeah. you know, we'll die within a certain amount of months from one I another. Mean, I think. I, and that's I not, think it is not romantic. romantic yeah, yeah, but it's yeah. Not, not romantic, but it's definitely kind of like if you follow this to its logical conclusion, it's like a quote unquote successful relationship is one that ends with there. the two of you dying and in theory not marrying anyone else, I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what are some of these relationship escalator goals? We've talked about them before. Let's talk about them again. Right. So so like Emily mentioned, kind of first one is just finding a partner at all. The mm-hmm. idea that you know, you in your life are more valuable if you have a partner, right? Mm. We're, we're kind of told that idea of like, oh, you don't have a partner. Mm, you must be unhappy. Mm. Uh, and then number two, well, these, these next two can sometimes be in a different order depending on your beliefs. But the next one could be like living together, mm-hmm. right? And again, it's this idea of like, oh, well, your relationship's not really that serious unless you're living together. Or, well, obviously that would be the goal of your relationship is to get to a point where you would live together Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah uh the next one which again maybe comes before moving in together but it's marrying someone um and specifically especially i think in today's society and definitely maybe in society of old it was marrying someone who was financially supportive or emotionally supportive based on you know what you both want in a relationship i guess and Mm -hmm. and uh, often some people would be the more emotional support of the family and others would be more of the financial support of the family. Obviously, sometimes that all has to convalesce and, you know, both partners or both parents have to do all of the the jobs of being emotionally and financially supportive. But mm. at times, those two things are separate in certain households. Um, and the next one is when two become one. Yeah, we, when two you, become <laughs> one. That's, Meaning like a little too old the, for you guys. Yeah, this, I have no idea refer- what that was. Are you referring to banging? No, I'm referring to the idea that like <laughs> you become like individuals become an a oh, we like an us like, like, ident- like we the, are going to yes. get a you know dog together and we are going to this party. And we are, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. any of those things, just that that essentially the identity of the individual is left for the identity of the partnership. I see. Sorry, I brought up the whole banging thing because of my religious upbringing. There oh, yeah. Was, fucking. There was so much. Thank you for the synonym. <laughs> um, there was just so much emphasis on you know there's the this verse is that, after marriage. Well, but there's the verse in the Bible that's like when two become one flesh, you know, referring to. The we first, haven't gotten there yet in drunk Bible study. We Excuse have not me. yet. Not yeah. quite. Um, when is that? Oh my gosh, I'm excited. Oh, we got a while to go. Um, but yes, this <laughs> idea that, um, you know, sex is also tied to your identities and your very souls mm. merging together. And that's why it is so, so, so important to not just have sex willy nilly. Because then you become one person. With, with multiple, multiple people and you can't you can't and then it's a time paradox exactly and the universe is yes. collapsing on themselves yes, okay. exactly I see. Yeah. yeah wow um <laughs> so other relationship escalator goals could involve buying a home together or buying some kind of property together having a mortgage yes having a mortgage together i'm um, having children together super common one um yeah yeah um i mean retiring together like the idea of kind of spending your leisure years hanging your, out your twilight years your golden years what is it uh, any, any I, like one of them. I really like leisure years leisure because yeah. that's what i want the emphasis to be on in those years <laughs> not All on twilight not on gold just on leisure hmm. nice mm-hmm. uh and then you know related to that is this idea of growing old and then dying together and staying together forever and not mm-hmm. divorcing yeah yeah forever until you die yeah yeah so there's nothing wrong with any of these goals. Like we're not saying you're silly for wanting this or it's absurd to pursue this. Um, we just want to urge people to be mindful when it comes to their own relationship goal setting and their own life goal setting that it's, you know, I think I, I think back to our episode where we interviewed Amy Guerin, who wrote the Relationship Escalator book. 
how she mentioned, like, this is in the air that we breathe. Mm -hmm. You know, this is like, like we're fish and this is the water that we swim in is this relationship escalator, this progression. And so it does require just some analysis and some critical thinking, um, you know, to really examine and see, like, what are the things that I do actually want? And what are the things that I just feel like I should expect or that I should be pursuing, but but I don't know if I actually even want them or not. Um, yeah. Because, gosh, I mean, I know I've definitely fallen victim to just kind of assuming, like, well, this is what's going to come next. And... I pursue the next step, which could be like living with someone or or becoming exclusive with someone and then realize right afterwards, oh, wait, I didn't actually want that. Um, and there's kind of this disconnect and this dissonance when I realize like, wait, but everyone tells me that I should want this or everyone tells me that like when I do move in with this person that it should become more intimate and feel better, but it doesn't. And I don't understand why, you know, this was like so many, so many years ago before I started actually thinking critically about these things. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like it's not always so clear of like, I really want this goal and then I get it and I realize, Oh, I didn't want that. But sometimes it's like years later, you kind of go, huh, maybe that's why I kind of felt that like disillusionment or this sense of like, what's wrong with me that I don't Mm -hmm. feel as happy as I've been told I should feel at this point or why I don't feel as invested in this thing that I felt like was such an important goal. Mm. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. that's not always so obvious right away. It's not. I mean, but definitely I think as you said, it's, it is really important to think critically about it just because if you don't, there can be some consequences in your life as time goes on And the things that I'm about to talk about that we all are about to talk about, they don't necessarily just happen, obviously, because you're doing something in your life that you don't want. It can be a variety of Mm -hmm. things that lead to these. But I think that it also is kind of systemic in a way like it, it can breed this idea that, you know, my life is is occurring in a way that I didn't expect or that I didn't really want just because I, I'm i doing the thing that everybody does and mm. it's ultimately not making me happy. So again, like I urge people to actually think about it before going and taking the plunge of doing something like creating a life and bringing it into the world mm. without really being like, is that something that I want or am I just doing it because I feel pressured into doing it? Mm. I have so many examples of this in my family and in my own life and in my, you know, people who have been my partners, their parents who are, were absent for them. Just, mm-hmm. I see it over and over and over again. So to me, that really means something. Mm, yeah. Yeah. It makes me think of, gosh, this happened several years ago. I think this even happened back in my monogamous days that somehow I typed in a URL to a website wrong and it <laughs> redirected me to someone's um, like wedding page. Oh, I think wow. it was kind of at the beginning of that trend of couples making a website for their this wedding. Is our wedding website. Okay. Yeah, where it'd be like, you know, you could RSVP, you could access their gift registry, you could see their cute, you know, engagement photos. Mm-hmm. And this one, they happened to also write a little bit of their story. <laughs> and I've... I remember feeling so bad because their story was just like, like, Allie met Jim at such and such place. And then they were together for like about two years. And then Jim proposed because Allie started dropping hints that like, maybe it's just about that time to get married. Um, And it was like, I I think I actually, (laughs) I think I actually retold it better than it was written. Because I remember that the way that it was written, it was really like, so not inspired. Literally, the story was like, he proposed because she was like, hey, when are you going to propose, <laughs> basically? Right. Um, and I was like, hmm. But that's not uncommon. That's the yes, thing I was going to say, know. like 98% of people who read that I wedding don't... site <laughs> yeah. didn't even didn't even question that. Is didn't that an even official number, that. Jace? Yeah, yeah, I don't know if that's yes. like necessarily. <laughs> I, did a, I did a study real quick. <laughs> okay. No, but just real like, quick. think about it. I would have read that years ago and been like, yeah, okay, that's just, yeah, duh, mm. that's normal. That's just normal life. Mm. not thinking like, wait a minute, that's kind of a weird reason to get married to someone. Yeah. Like, honestly, that would not even have occurred to me. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, I guess to be fair, I was in a relationship once where, well, gosh, I forget how long we've been together, but he had started talking about wanting to live together. And I was like, eh, I don't know. But like, I started looking at places still and I started thinking about it and, but I was still like in my gut, I was still just like, I'm just like really not 
ready for this. And that was part of the reason why we broke up is because like, mm-hmm. I think we got into this conversation where it's like, he was just like, this is, this is, it's time for us to move in together. That's just it's how time. it's like, yeah. exactly. It's time. And, and I feel sad about it now because it's like in the past, that conversation, it meant like, well, if for me, it's not time, that means the relationship has to end, you know? Um, and it's like, there were other reasons for the relationship to end, but I feel like now I would have much better access to being able to be like, it's okay if it's time for you, but it's not time for me. Like we can figure something else out it, yeah. and it doesn't have to be like, Oh, if we're moving backwards on the escalator, then we need to break up. Yeah. Or if we're even just not moving forward. Yes. That too. That mm. too. But yeah, I am, really I am point. glad that I didn't go through with it because I know that it definitely would have been like a, like, like, I don't know. I moved up on the escalator and this didn't work essentially. Like this didn't bring me any happiness or any closeness or intimacy. Yeah. Yeah. So, Okay as I sort of previewed, what are some consequences of having or going through with relationship escalator goals when you don't actually want them? Yeah. So first on our list here is infidelity. Mm -hmm. And this, you know, I think the the popular narrative is just like, oh, well, people who cheat are bad people or they're dishonest or or whatever. Right. And there's obviously a lot more nuance to it. Um, But part of it, I think, can come from you know, people have been told like you do these things or you take these steps or you find this type of person and then you'll be happy and you'll be satisfied. And when it doesn't work out exactly like they were told, then like there's sort of this like, well, something's wrong with me then or something's wrong with this. Right. Yeah, definitely. Um, which, you know, could, could lead to infidelity or, or step or number thing. Number two, <laughs> not step number two, thing number two is just sort of like, emotional unavailability kind of Mm. checking out mentally or emotionally from the relationship or just kind of like shutting down and withdrawing. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think related to that to like the emotional availability or checking out or shutting down, there can be actual physical availability, you know, like Emily mentioned, you know, a parent who's never around a parent who's like totally disengaged from their child's upbringing. Um, uh, or someone, I mean, honestly, like I've known a number of relationships where people just like up and leave, you yep. know, like, like yeah. they can't even handle renegotiating something or even being able to have a proper breakup. It's just like, I just got to leave, you know? Well, yeah. You hear about like those stories of women having a child and then the man bounces. Yeah. I mean, that's really And I'm common. sure that like that happens both ways, mm-hmm. but, but yeah, it is common. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's like, well, I guess they just didn't want it Mm. or something. I don't know. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's sometimes I think it's more complex than just like a black and white didn't want it for sure. But I mean, there's definitely cases of people, you know, people that I've known personally who have had kids. And of course, they love their children. It's not like they hate their children, but it's definitely a case of like, I wasn't ready for this life milestone i wasn't ready for this particular goal yeah but i felt like i had to or i felt like i was running out of time or i felt like i needed to in order for us to have a cohesive marriage or something like that yeah Yeah. well i mean someone in my family i won't say who but they uh literally gave up their baby to their sibling because they just couldn't they they all of their friends were having kids Mm -hmm. and they realized that it was not what they wanted, even though they decided to have a child and go through with the the kid and birthing the kid and all that. And then they were like, nope, not going to do this. And so they gave the kid up. Yeah. I read some, gosh, I read this really, de- really fascinating, but depressing study. <laughs> um, and it was, it was a study that it didn't take place in the States. It took place in, I think it was in a certain European country, basically where, but it was still a relatively very traditional country um, Mm -hmm. where there were still some very traditional expectations around gender roles and about women being obliged to have children and to, Mm. you know, be the reproducers essentially. And it was just, I don't know. It was just like such a sad study of like talking to women who'd had children um, like, and who really hadn't had a choice in it. And like, just talking about like the love they feel for their children, but also this like such intense, like regret and pain around Uh not being able to actually actively choose that for themselves. Yeah. Um, 
And it's just, yeah, gosh. Anyway, sorry, like I said, I didn't mean to, to turn this into a bummer. Um, no, but, it's but just... I, I think it's really freaking important to, yeah. to talk about. And that's why, like, yeah, I mean, my my mom didn't have me until she was 38 because she was like, I was not ready until mm. I was ready. Mm-hmm. And I would not have you until I really wanted to mm-hmm. kind of thing. And if I didn't, then I wasn't going to. Yeah. And I think that's important. But also your mom was in a position to be able to make that choice. You know, yeah, also no, you're absolutely aren't. right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And I think that that is a privilege that clearly not everybody has. And it is really tough. Right. right. Yeah. Anyway, I, I want to do a whole other episode about um, women's choices to or to not reproduce. Uh, yeah. But that'll be some other time. Because um, going along, you know, I think a really obvious one here is is just divorce. You know, the divorce rate, um, because I think we've seen what the results have been of a culture where people feel like marriage is compulsory to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that we've seen the fallout of that in um, divorce as divorce has become more acceptable. Like I think, especially among our parents' generation, um, you know, that that's just been kind of the byproduct of that. And then also um, just general life unhappiness. You know, I've, I've come up across this with working with some clients that sometimes I think it's kind of similar to the frustration that I experienced in my own relationships of feeling like I took this step. I made this investment in the relationship. Why do I not feel good about it? Or why Mm -hmm. do I not feel happy? You know, maybe, maybe I even, I love my partner, but why do I feel frustrated and depressed and anxious? And sometimes it can be the result of, you know, moving to a particular goal that you're just like not quite ready for. Yeah. And like you said, moving to those goals can lead to things like depression and Mm. also things like coping mechanisms. So that means drugs, alcohol, various ways of figuring out how to cope with a life and a situation that you're Mm. not either ready for or that you don't really want. If you don't feel as though you should get divorced, I mean, I've met people who are like, well, I don't believe in divorce. Mm. It says one should not get divorced in the Bible. And so I'm prepared to stay in a loveless marriage for the rest of my life. Mm. And, you know, looking for coping mechanisms. Yeah. In that way. Yeah. Actually, the comedian Mike Birbiglia, Mike Mm -hmm. Birbiglia, Uh um, who's one of my favorites, he, um, in one of his stand-up sets, he actually gets kind of serious in talking about an early relationship of his that was kind of on this relationship escalator and where he kind of felt this pressure of like, oh, she really wants to get married and she really wants to have kids. And like that pain of feeling like there's no way that I can say no to this because saying no is going to mean the dissolution of everything. And so Mm -hmm. I just go along and say yes and say yes and say yes and say like, yeah, we're going to get married next summer and yeah, we're going to do this. And even though he knew in his body the entire time, he knew it was not true, but he still had to say yes. And for him, it manifested physically you know and having like terrible sleep disorders and anxiety all the time and panic attacks and oh is that the guy who like sleepwalked yes is sleep, that sleepwalk, sleepwalk with, with me, me? Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah. yes yeah yeah, um, yeah. you know and eventually also eventually like cheating on his girlfriend as well mm. um you know like a lot of these things manifested because yeah. of the fact that he you know he knew he was moving forward with something that like he just really wasn't ready for yeah yeah so we do want to start turning this around and talking about more, the, you know, the positive side of things and not just the bummer sides of things. Um, but I do want to take a quick interlude on this common question that I get that all of us have gotten at various points in our lives. And, and I think we're all familiar with this question. It comes up in rom-coms. It comes up in real life. And it's, it's this, um, you know, like, well, what are we doing? Where's the relationship going? You know, where are we headed? And there's kind of this underlying sense of like, we need to keep things moving. We need to keep going up the escalator, you know, or else things are going to stagnate. So it's kind of like, you know, what are we doing? Are are you going to ask me to marry you or not? Um, Mm. Are we going to have a baby or not? Are we going to move in together or not? And I think that, you know, I've often been asked this question, especially since I started being more out about having multiple partners, because of course... I mean, once everyone gets past the scandal and wants to ask about the sex and the jealousy and stuff like that, you know, people start asking the questions of like, well, well what about getting married? Yes. What do you about... like the most? Oh, gosh. Right. I hate that question. Um, <laughs> you know, what about getting married? What about having kids? What about moving in together? Like, how are you going to build a relationship? Who are you going to actually 
move up the relationship escalator with. Um, Not that they would ask the question that yes, way. Yes, but, but that's <laughs> essentially what they're getting <laughs> to. Right, yeah. right. But what about when you want to do a real relationship? Where right. It, where yeah, it when you like really that. like someone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the thing is that I don't think it's bad to want to have that sense of moving forward. And I don't think it's bad to want to stay away from things becoming static or stagnant. Um, I think that's actually a good thing. However, I always like to encourage people, you know, instead of just attaching forward progress just to these relationship escalator goals, you know, it doesn't have to be these particular goals that we've been handed by society, but you can still be taking actions to move your relationships forward and to deepen your relationships and expand. And rather than it having to be like, we're just doing this kind of like step, 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 step up the relationship escalator. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, and I like, I like that sort of wording of like, let's think about how we can deepen this relationship or expand this relationship or, or even like how we can each be like developing and evolving and changing in our own lives and seeing Mm. how our relationship maybe evolves is another good word. Like how Mm. it evolves and changes over time. Cause like a relationship where it's just the same now for the next 50 years, like I could see succumbing to a certain sense of, of, of boredom or a sense of like, well, what's the, what are we doing here? And maybe for some people that sounds great. They're like, no, actually sign me up for that. Um, but, but I know for a lot of people, that's where you kind of get to that sense of like, where are we going? But I think thinking of like, just reframing it to words like evolving or deepening or expanding rather than like, are we moving forward or are we moving up or like, where are we going kind of implies there's a destination Hmm. that you're trying to get to. And something that I've noticed which I think, I think really comes up in that question of like, where's this relationship going? Like, where are we going? What are we doing here? What the way I've seen that manifest in a lot of people's lives, my own included is like, okay, I have feelings for this person. And so if I want to treat this seriously, I need it to keep going forward. Right. Mm-hmm. Or like, oh, yeah, I value this person. So I want to keep it moving forward that there can sometimes be this like rush to complete these next steps. Cause you're like, oh yeah, totally feel, feel ready for this next step. I feel ready for this. And there's sort of this sense of like, we're always like, you know, climbing toward a goal. And then you sort of get to one where you're going to stay for a little while. Like I know for a lot of people, this is like uh, getting married actually Mm. is where I've seen this come up with, with people that I know with peers of mine, where it's like, we've, you know, worked and worked and worked and worked and worked and had these goals sort of individually and together toward getting married. And then we get here And all of a sudden it's like, wait, like the story we're kind of told sort of stops here at this point. It's It's a happily ever after Mm -hmm. with no like actual roadmap for what that looks like. Right. So then either it's kind of like, oh, I freak out about that and everything falls apart. Or it's like that kind of just this like terrifying sense of like, where are we going now? And then that's when people start going like, well, uh, 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 maybe we need to have kids right it's like that the kids will solve everything right it's like well we need another goal to get to and i know people aren't thinking of this literally in this way but i've just watched so many friends of mine and, and relations of mine go through a very similar thing of mm. kind of like being so goal oriented that like eventually you run out of goals if if your goals are going to follow this one trajectory right mm-hmm. all right so we do want to emphasize that what we are talking about in this next part of the episode are healthy goals. And it is important to have goals in relationships. But why? Well, as long as they're like the right type of goals. Not to say that like we are the end all be all of like <laughs> what the correct and incorrect what types right of and goals wrong are. Might but be. but yeah, okay. So there was a study, a study in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. It's definitely the best journal to talk to at a party. Totally, yes. <laughs> so okay, researchers apparently examined uh, the connection between relationship satisfaction and self regulation. So I've heard about self regulation specifically in relation to goal setting 
Oh, well, like, there you go. Because that's part of it. Self-regulation is related to goal setting and kind of like setting goals is part of how you self-regulate yeah, your life and that, your trajectory and momentum and stuff I think like that, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So apparently it said individuals experiencing higher levels of satisfaction in their relationship exhibit higher levels of perceived control, goal focus, perceived partner support and positive effect during goal pursuit. Mm. So it basically results in higher rates of daily progress on personal goals. So that means like if your relationship satisfaction increases, then your motivation to effectively self-regulate your actions happens (laughs) and your progression towards achieving your own personal goals happens, which I think makes sense. So it's kind of like, it's like instead of the goals being in place being the thing that makes your relationship better and more satisfying, it's when your relationship is better and more satisfying, then it's actually it's easier. It's actually possible for you to not only achieve your relationship goals, but also your personal goals as well. Which makes sense because like if your relationship is in shambles and you're worrying about it all the time, it's probably difficult to like actively and effectively work on your own personal goals Mm, unless you're just like i'm shutting all that shit out and i'm not going (laughs) to think about it and i'm only going to think of my personal goals but it really turns on its head like i think that really common thing that we do as human beings of i guess putting the cart before the horse there of kind of like having Mm. the relationship goal first before we have like the relationship and i don't mean like before having a relationship at all but it's like having the goal before having like the satisfying relationship that could actually attain that. Well, I, suppose. I would argue that yes, you achieve more satisfaction in your relationship, but it's like, it is to a degree an expansion. It's like, mm. even if you're really uh, I- intimate with a person initially, you can still like build on that intimacy and you can still get more satisfaction from your relationship over time. And I think, again, like if you set small goals for yourself, like trying to figure out how to communicate better, mm-hmm. then that's ultimately going to bring you to a higher level of satisfaction in your relationship and allow other parts of your life to open up. Yeah, I think, gosh, I think there's like two, two like super key parts of it. One, yeah. I think what you were just getting into and that we're going to talk about in a second here, which is about uh, setting goals that actually have like your well-being and having a good relationship in Mm -hmm. mind rather than just like meeting some external goalpost of of like what success looks like but if we could rewind even back like a little bit before that kind of from a philosophical standpoint what Dedeker was getting at is this idea that like we focus on the the goal for this relationship before we focus on just like having a relationship that feels really Mm. good right now and then going on to the next goal instead it's like oh well <clears throat> things might not be perfect now but that's because there's this goal right, right. like if we get to that goal things will be better well and gosh and don't that's we, we do that but we do that with the rest of our lives that's I what mean, i was gonna get right. to okay. that's what with i was just gonna say like, like, yeah, yeah we, we project our happiness into the future we yeah. like we think that oh well i don't have to be happy now or like it's okay that i'm not happy now or maybe i'm even going to try to make myself less happy now So that I'm more motivated to achieve my goals. Interesting. Mm. With this idea that like those goals are somehow going to be more worth it in the long run or that those things are, are, you know, going to then just make you happy on their own. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's very much tied up kind of in this whole philosophy, not just about relationships, but kind of more generally. Right. And I'm guilty of all of this for sure. I'm not meaning to say that I'm not, but, but it is something that I've kind of become aware of. Yeah. Yeah. So I get a lot of people who ask me, we get a lot of people who reach out to the show and ask us, you know, like, okay, so if I'm trying to step off the relationship escalator and trying to forge my own relationships and maybe even be a little bit of a relationship anarchist, um, what are some good goals that aren't necessarily escalator goals that I could look forward to in a relationship or is it all just going to be kind of loosey goosey amoeba like and nobody cares what's <laughs> happening and we all just kind of float around that way no they can be like tangible goals like tangible amoeba. and actionable yeah i think that's that's a good part of it it's like is just thinking about like but what are things that you actually want like what are things that you actually want to do mm-hmm. kind of individually but also together so like number one on our list here is planning and going on a trip like having some specific trip in mind that the two of you are going to work together, like with this as a goal. 
And maybe that's going to take you a lot of time. Like we've really got to save up money and get save up our vacation days and whatever to do it. Or maybe it's something that you can do sooner than that. Maybe it's even just like a little day trip. But whatever it is, it's like that's a very tangible goal. And it's something that when you've done it, it's very clearly like, look, we achieved that goal. Like we mm. set out together and worked together and pooled our resources to be able to do this thing. And we did it. And we got to have that experience. Right. Um, I think another one that's maybe a little more, almost a little more individual rather than something the two of you would do together, but it's related, which is forming your own independent relationships with your metamorphs. So this is assuming that you're in a non-monogamous relationship. And, and that, that you both want that as and, metamorphs. And, the, and that your metamors are interested in that, too. Just like, like there's a lot latch of... onto him and be like, I'm going to like you and you're going to like me. Be a little metamor barnacle on the side of your yeah. head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but, but, you know, I've thought about this where it's sort of like, um, like, hey, like, I, I want to reach out and just be like, I would love to have some kind of my own relationship with you. That's not just through our partner, like through our shared partner. Um, but it's just like, yeah, we could, it doesn't have to be anything big, but just like, Hey, let's talk every now and then, or like play video games every now and then, or, you know, like something. Um, and that can look a whole lot of different ways for other people. It's like, you know, it's much more of a, like we hang out every week and we go shopping together and, you know, do our, I don't know, homework together, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be all of that. It could be something else, but just kind of having that goal, for yourself, but obviously it's kind of connected to your relationship. Yeah. So the next one is going to be supporting each other in your individual life goals, mm -hmm. which is awesome. <laughs> awesome to just do in general. It's really great to have partners that are supportive of one another and that aren't threatened by each other's successes either. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. that could big. definitely be a thing that occurs, yeah. I think. Yeah. That there's a little bit of envy, maybe, or jealousy within the relationship if someone is having a really great time for a few years in terms of their, like, individual goals. Um, but just, yeah, being there for each other when when, one's, when one has successes, uh, getting to see each other succeed. Like, you kind of get to share in that then. Totally. It's like, part of my goal is wanting to support you and then see you succeed. Yeah. So like, that's my goal too now. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's not just your goal. So both of us can work on that in yeah. some way. Yeah. I uh, And then also creating, as I said before, a more solid communication foundation. So, <laughs> <laughs> and it, that can mean a lot of things. I mean, we talk about communication all the time on this show, but things like practicing uh, the Triforce of Communication mm -hmm. Being able to like speak more effectively in the ways that you want about what you're communicating. Like getting through a fight in, yeah. a, in a healthy Halting. way. Yeah. You know, like if I can like I actually like apply halt. A goal of just like applying a tool that you learned about totally. on this podcast, for mm -hmm. example. Like, you know, right. this month I'm going to halt and actually like do it right. instead of trying to push through the halt when mm. my partner calls halt. Like that's a big one for me. Yeah. Yeah. I love that one as a goal. Like I, and I feel like for myself personally in my relationships right now, since I don't have a ton of like, at least right now, I don't have a ton of like very traditional relationship escalatory goals, either in my relationships or for myself personally. But I love having specifically this of just always working on deepening communication and always working on, you know, getting to know each other's little trigger points and getting mm -hmm. to know the places where each other really shine when it comes to communication and getting to know the ways that we can support each other and help each other and kind of develop our own language, essentially, for, um, you know, for communicating with each other. Like, I really love that because that feels like that's work that's it's it's work that is going to go on forever, first of all. Um, uh -huh. But it's work that's always, I don't know, to me always feels like, yes, it has this really wonderful momentum and this and that sense of like the energy of like expansion and deepening. Like it feels really, really good to me. It feels like a really, really good goal to like always have ongoing. So I really, really like that one specifically. And honestly, I feel like that's what everyone should do, even if you are on the relationship escalator. <laughs> um, so still just add that goal. Or even if you have a much more traditional it. relationship. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, some other examples of maybe some non-escalator goals include, uh, I'm well aware of this one, um, you know, when you're in a long distance relationship, it can be like strategizing on the ways to see each other more often. 
if that's something both of you want, if that's something that fits both into both of your lives and budgets and things like that. Um, but collaborating on things like that, um, it could be as simple as just learning more about each other. I actually really like this one as a goal for uh, like the very, very early days of a relationship when yeah. everything's so heightened and mm. it's a mix of like, maybe there's some NRE thrown in there, or maybe there's the anxiety of like, is this person going to be compatible with me? Are they going to like me? Do they like me as much as I like them? Or what if I don't like them as much as they like me? Um, you know, and I think that that's where all this anxiety can come up and stress around these kind of early couple first dates when you're getting to know someone. But just having this goal of like, I just want to learn more about this person. And I just want to also show myself to this other person. And just having that goal instead of the goal being, I want to get a second date or... Mm you know i see you're talking way early i'm talking way early see, i was thinking even like a few months in oh def definitely i think this is another one that has a lot of staying power but right. i feel like this is a really healthy one to have on at the beginning of a relationship where things can feel yeah, so sense. fraught yeah you yeah. know yeah. yeah yeah and because it's one i feel like that's a hard goal to to quote unquote fail at essentially you know especially if you go suppose, into if you yeah. go into a first date with that's all your goal it's just i'm going to learn more about this person and also share a little bit of my person or myself with this other person um you know like it's kind of like setting the the goal post very low you know right instead of saying something specific like i want to take this person home or i want to make sure they're going to give me a second date or i want to you know yada 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 yeah or i want to find the one yes right that that puts a lot of pressure on it that yes. you really don't have a lot of boyfriend you mm -hmm. don't have a lot of control over whether that succeeds or not yes. right um <clears throat> yeah like another one would be um sharing a meaningful experience or an event together so not not just like a trip or some just like let's have a random thing but more like we want to experience a certain holiday together or an anniversary or going to some kind of festival or maybe an event that's meaningful to you. Like maybe growing up, like you loved your local like state fair. Maybe that's kind of a, a special event, um, you know, to, to be able to experience together. Cause that can not only have this sense of like, you know, we have this goal of like, oh, this is a thing we'd really like to do together. You also get sort of the planning of it, which is also exciting and a way to kind of collaborate. But then it's also can have kind of this um, sort of, I guess, a little bit more traditional feeling milestone-ness to it. It's like, oh, this is our first Christmas together. Or like this, remember that time where we went to your hometown for this thing that you did growing up? Or right that we made up our new holiday that we celebrate every year and like that's our thing kind of like whatever it is that you get sort of like a milestone out of it and also it can be a goal and thing that you look forward to together uh and then uh, last on our list here this one might be my favorite um and that is to have a goal be doing your first radar together uh, it, apparently it, from what we've heard from some of our patrons it takes a little while sometimes Sometimes some people do it real early. Some people wait a while. My yeah. my newest relationship, which has been extant for about a year, I still haven't mm. had a first radar, mostly because I'm scared. Yeah, so, no, my in my sense. in my relationship with Caitlin, we went almost a whole year yeah. oh, wow. before doing our first radar. And I don't um, I don't know if I, I necessarily imagine. recommend that. I mean, I, I think it's do probably it, do a little sooner. better to do yeah. it sooner than that. But but yeah, Dedeker, for you, like I don't know, you do a radar in Japanese. <laughs> yeah that's part of why i'm scared yeah i was like does yeah. that make sense <laughs> even trying to kind of explain it in the first place i'm like yeah i'm yeah. yeah. whip out the vocabulary here yeah yeah maybe you could start by translating our pdf into japanese and then you could Ooh. give that to him and then you know be like <laughs> i'm really afraid of, of the lost in translation moments that would happen as the oh, result sure, of that sure, yeah because yeah, they've already yeah. been plentiful let me tell you oh, wait i've got it sorry we're now we're just workshopping dedicate's relationship <laughs> but i've got it what if as sort of a couple's activity you together translate oh like let's together translate <laughs> this let's document let's together translate <laughs> let's together translate uh, yeah i think that could be yeah, a great no, actually that could be good sort of a team building exercise uh, yeah okay that then right. also helps explain and then we end up with a resource of our document being in japanese <laughs> for our huge japanese audience hey, yeah. we had a show in japan it's true it's our japanese good. audience is surprisingly larger than you might think <laughs> yeah yeah 
Still not large, but larger than you might think. Larger. But it's also not a large country, so relatively. <laughs> there yeah. you go. There you, you go. Know, there you yeah. go. True. Anyway, just as a last note and reminder, um, Emily did talk about this a little bit, but I think it is so important that like your goals within your relationship, it doesn't always have to be goals created by committee or goals that the two of you have created together. Like your personal life goals are also important and they're also valid and they don't necessarily have to be wrapped up in a partner or wrapped up in your partner's life goals as well. Um I definitely think that that's a really good thing to include when you're having regular check-ins or a radar that you are talking about the personal goals that you want, whether it's like the goal for this month or the goal for this year or what I want to see in five years, you know, if that's the way that you operate. Um, But I think constantly checking in with each other about even those personal life goals is also really important too. Um, so we've covered a lot of ground today. We could definitely cover so much more ground. My goodness. If you want to know more about this, there's a couple of other episodes that I can send you to. Um, you can go back to our episode 100, which was our relationship resolutions episode. And that was a more structured episode, uh, structured exercise in there, we have a pdf for it Gosh, i we found do it a pdf wow yeah amazing i looked at it uh but for being able you know we kind of themed it around the new year about being able to kind of come up with some actionable goals or intentions with your partner for the relationship for the coming year that's definitely related to this um we definitely talked about like relationship goals and relationships that inspire us personally if you go to episodes 162 and 163 inspiring relationships part one and two and then if you want to know more about the relationship escalator you can go and listen to our interview with amy garen slash aggie says who wrote the book stepping off the relationship escalator that is in episode 164. so i'm really interested to hear from all of our patrons what relationship goals y'all have in your life uh, if you also have been on the relationship escalator in some relationships that you've had, how that's felt, if you've ultimately been like, this is not for me, or if you've said, hey, like, I actually really have been mindful about these things and they are things that I want, uh, we want to hear about it. The best place to share your thoughts with other listeners is on this episode's discussion thread in our private Facebook group or Discord chat. You can get access to these groups and join our exclusive community by going to patreon.com slash multiamory. In addition, you can share with us publicly on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. You can email us at info at multiamory.com. Leave us a voicemail at 678-M-U-L-T-I-05. Or you can leave us a voice message on Facebook. Multiamory is created and produced by Jace Lindgren, Dedeker Winston, and me, Emily Matlack. Our episodes are edited by Mauricio Balbanera. Our social media wizard is Will McMillan. Our theme song is Forms I Know I Did by Josh and Anand from the Fractal Cave EP. The full transcript is available on this episode's page on multiamory.com. Hey, this is Dan Savage from the Savage Lovecast and Savage Love. You're listening to a Swing Set podcast at Swing Set FM.